The pandemic thing is an interesting question, but probably not something that we really need to get into now. Do, wait, 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 hold on. Do, do, do tell. Give me the short version. Well, um, the motivations of the people who made the decisions about how to deal with the pandemic, particularly in the United States of America, were based on the you know, on the thing that everything's based on, which is bottom line and profit and all of that, and not based upon the needs of the people. Um, which is why there's a million dead, you know, and in China there's about half a dozen. Um, but we can never trust their numbers, right? I mean, we have no idea. Oh, bollocks. How many Don't give me the huh? old Russian-Chinese propaganda nonsense. You, you believe whatever the Chinese would tell you in terms of the death count? I believe whatever people who are um, neutral right. will tell me about what's going. Where can you find news? And don't tell me you have proper me. news on from, CNN. From me. Okay. Come from, on, I'm balanced. Well, how would you know? Where do you get your information I, I, from? Roger, I don't talk for a living. I, by the way, I've missed you. I can tell already. Holy <laughs> crap. I read for a living. I don't talk for a living. All I do is consume news. And my yeah, whole mantra is you got to change the channel and mix up your news diet or you're not getting a straight story. Well, good for you. And good luck with that theory. If you're going to spend all your time sitting around reading what comes out of Fox and the New York Times and the Washington Post and yep. all that other crap that's out there in the mainstream, followed recently by Rolling Stone, who no longer want to cover proper stories, they won't speak to me. Why not? Oh, because they don't deal with legacy acts anymore, I'm told by some new bloke. Wait, legacy, legacy acts that are putting 20,000 fannies in seats a night? Yeah, yeah, those sort of legacy <laughs> acts. No, they're not interested in it. Actually, I think it might have something more to do with my activism. Money! So they say Is a root of all evil today is, is this the freedom that comes with being... I've only got one message. Two strangers passing in the street, by chance two gl passing glances meet, and I am you, and what I see is me. That is my message. I and that was on medal, which was in 1970. And basically, my message hasn't changed. I recognize your humanity, but I recognize all the Russians and the Chinese and the Ukrainians and the Yemenis and the Palestinians and the Germans and the French and the Spanish and the Ecuadorians and the Peruvians and the Colombians. Well done, by the way, Colombia. You finally got a president who isn't in the pocket of United States of America businessmen and maybe your people will start getting a fair shake. I love that. I think it's great. The inauguration, by the way, is on the 7th, which is in two days' time. I thought the message was with, without, and who'll deny that's what the fighting's all about. Well, that is part of the message, yeah, and thank you for remembering that, Larry. And I still emphasize it in the middle of the song, Us and Them. I would stop playing the bass at that point and gesticulate it because it's something that I think we need to, we, I, I want to spread that message. That is what the fighting is all about, you know. We always come back, or I always come back, to this tiny, tiny platform, except it isn't, which is Paris 1948 and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, either you subscribe to the 30 articles of that declaration, or you don't. You cannot cherry pick, you can't have it, you can't have it your own way. You have to say either this is about all of us, all our brothers and sisters, irrespective of ethnicity or religion or nationality, or it isn't. But you can't cherry pick, you can't say, well, we deserve human rights, but they don't. That is called being supremacist. And there's religious supremacy and, and you know, skin color based supremacy and political supremacy and this. And that. Well, it, so that's a very important document. Us.
that story is only about my desire to tell the truth, my truth, the truth about who I am, how I feel, how I feel things need to be changed, why I quote Aldous Huxley you know, and George Orwell in this show that I'm doing now, because their warnings in their great novels, uh, Brave New World and 1984 and Animal Farm, uh, warnings about the dystopian uh, future were very real when they made them, 1929, 1948. Not to forget uh, your, your ex-president Dwight D. Eisenhower, who in his farewell address from the White House in 1960... Military well, industrial complex? Yeah, you're, you're ahead of me, obviously, because you read a bit. That's exactly right, and you criticize me because I read too much, according to you. Are you an equal opportunity offender? You're trying to have a fight. Huh? No, no, no. I just enjoy the discourse with you. Yeah, well, good. So do I, okay. Michael. You'll see when you go to the show that I talk about sheep in the same... I say that this is my homage to George Orwell and to Aldous Huxley, as I said before earlier in this conversation, and it is. As when Huxley wrote Brave New World in 1929 and Orwell wrote 1984 and 1948, as we know, and Eisenhower was 61, well, I, this was, I wrote Sheep in 1977, and I was right to warn us about the coming dystopia when I wrote Sheep in the same way that those great authors were right to try and warn us in their work about what can happen if we the people let go of the reins and let it fall into the hands of, as Eisenhower said, he's at the Pentagon, or unfettered capitalism because the end result is the same it's the same thing all the power drifts into where the money is and that's where the power resides in this country right now happily there are countries in the world where all the power doesn't reside but we the people have to stick together to try and make sure that we encourage the possibility of the people having some power In the current show, you've got a montage of war criminals, according to you, and a picture apparently of President Biden on the screen, and it says, just getting started. What's mm. that all about? President Joe Biden? Yeah. Well, he's fueling the fire in the Ukraine for a start. That is a huge crime. Why won't the United States of America uh, encourage Zelensky, or whatever his name is, the president, to negotiate um, and to explain why when he stood on the platform of, of uh, ratifying the Minsk agreements, which he did when he was elected by 73% of the Ukrainian population that was left able to vote. After that, somebody either whispered in his ear or he completely changed his mind about making peace in the Donbass and about solidifying the Minsk, uh, Minsk agreements and making peace with their Russian neighbors and obviating the need for this horrific, horrendous war but you're, that's you're, killing. You're blaming, how, we don't know how many Ukrainians But you're blaming the party Russians. that got invaded. Come on, you've got it reversed. Well, no, I, well that's, that you, you know, any war, when did it start? What you need to do is look at the history and you can say, well, it started on this day. You could say it started in 2008, okay? It's basic, this war is basically about the action and reaction of NATO pushing right up to the Russian border, which they promised they wouldn't do when Gorbachev negotiated the withdrawal of the USSR from the whole of Eastern Europe. He said, we will do this on one condition, that you don't come one inch closer to the Russian border than the eastern borders of Germany. And you lot, if I may include you, in it, as an American, agreed to that and said, sure. Why it's doesn't the USA sue for peace now? Don't they care about but, Ukrainians? But you're, you're, why are they prolonging this war? Are, it could be ended tomorrow. If Joe Biden stood up on his hind legs and said, let's put a stop to this, it would end tomorrow. Mother, should I run for president? I'm
But should I trust the government? I will stand on that platform until the day I die, and if I live to be the age of Methuselah, I would still be standing on 1948 Paris. And, and I stand on that platform with all my brothers and sisters all over the world, irrespective of all the things that I've said. And there are billions of them in the South, in the poor world, in the third world, who have been trampled on for the last 500 years since we Europeans started spreading over the world and trying to steal everything from them, which is what we've been doing, including here in the United States, oh. I believe. This is not told, not taught in your schools, obviously. I, I, but I, when you say this, then I have to say, what about our role as liberators? You of all people, with, you have with no your, role as liberators. World what are you War II? Talking? World War II? You, you, you got into you World War II because Come it's on. Pearl Harbor. You, Pearl Harbor. You were completely isolationist until nine, until that sad, that devastating. I, I would argue awful we were always in, going to in get in, and that pushed us in. But thank God the United States got in, right? You well, lost your father well, in World War II. Thank God well, yeah, the United thank States... But right? thank God the Russians had already won the bloody war almost by then. Don't forget, the Ru 23 million Russians died protecting you and me you from would, the Nazi you, menace. Hey, and you would think the Russians would have learned their lesson from war and wouldn't have invaded Ukraine. Well, you, you with all your reading, I would suggest you... Michael, <laughs> that you go away and read a bit more and then try and figure out what the United States would do if the Chinese were putting um, nuclear armed missiles into Mexico and Canada. The Chinese are too busy encircling Taiwan as we speak. Okay? They're not encircling Taiwan. Taiwan <laughs> is part of China. And oh. that's been absolutely accepted by the whole of the international community since 1948. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh my God. <laughs>